second day of the opening Cornhill Test match. Welcome to the highlights and a very big crowd present at Edgbaston this morning to see the West Indies resume with Viv Richards and Larry Gomes. Yesterday, England 191 with Botham top score 64 and Downton playing a very good innings at the end, 33. And West Indies in reply were 53 for two at the close of play. The men out were Greenwich and Haynes. Gomes and Richards not out and Viv Richards even yesterday afternoon although he wasn't feeling all that well was looking to be in ominously good form and we pick up play now in the very first dry and should be very very good for batting though perhaps a bit on the slow side and we pick up play now in the very first over Derek Pringle is bowling it's the second ball and Vivian Richards is taking strike and in typical style carve that away from roundabout middle stump over mid wicket for four well, I thought uh, railing with that uh, Derek Pringle might have known that by now. Well, I think he'll soon find out that that's not the place you can bowl at the Richard. And uh, if he bowls a few more there, he'll suffer the same fate, I'm afraid. <laughs> and that's straight past the bowl. It's a chase again for Foster. And uh, no apparent effort in that shot, but it's racing away for four more. A little more than a, a forward push. quite carry Jeff Miller at uh, first slip finding that ball pitching a good yard in front it didn't carry which is sometimes happens on this wicket it's a little bit too paced that's over the top of mid off beautiful shot this time perfectly safe no problem at all there's no doubt that he was hitting this one over the top of there. That's where he intended to hit it, right in the middle. And uh, I think I would say that Prindle's just about the right pace for Richards. And we may very well have to see a spinner bowling soon. At least it just be a change of pace and make him hit the ball. And again, that's uh, clipped away very nicely through mid on. Good run in two by Gomes. Went through the first two quickly and comes back easily for a third. <laughs> That's going to be fairly close too. We just got outside. But, uh, I think uh, Ray was quite short enough to play that shot. No, I think on this wicket where the bounce is a little bit different, it probably wasn't quite sharp enough, and I think Bob was disappointed with this. Oh, bold. Well, I retract that. The ball was good, but it was a no ball. One of many, many no balls that have been bowled and that one produces the hundred for the West Indies. Nineteen of them in all. And he got a little edge to that. And Viv Richards. He's uh, just called for a glass of water and if you remember yesterday of course he had this tummy upset and didn't field after lunch Dennis Waits who is the physiotherapist attached to the West Indian team he's an Australian and a brilliant physiotherapist he has those fellas as fit as any cricketers I've ever seen anywhere in the world at any time. Marvellous conditioner and he's very highly regarded by them as well. He works full time with the West Indies squad. We could probably do with him down in Australia. It looks as though Viv's okay now. He's going to have to face Ian Botham. 112 for two, 44 to Richards, 25 to Gomes. A 
Well, that's the sort of delivery that doesn't deserve a wicket, but you take it all the same. And it was only a matter of a couple of inches away from second slip there. Fifty to Viv Richards. A good crowd here today at Edgbaston. And so there should be too if you have the chance to see the modern day master in action. Fifty from seventy-seven balls faced and eight fours. And that's just about how good a player he is. He's not in really very good nick, but uh, he still collects his 50s. That field setting will need a little adjustment because that was almost catchable by Gower, and yet it still went for four. It beat Pringle, the man three parts of the way to the boundary. And whilst it's all been going on, uh, Larry Gomes, who came in number three, has been gently going on, not looking in any trouble at all. It's always the way you watching Viv Richards play and you forget the bloke at the other end. But this chap is doing a marvellous job for the West Indies. Thank you, Tom. But uh, it was an excellent effort. <laughs> Touch and go, or in fact, whether that uh, was a difficult chance. Kept very low all the way in this flight. I suppose it could go down as a, as a difficult chance. Three slips, silly mid off in there. This picked his spot quite beautifully again. Clipped it between bowler and mid off for four more. In his own quiet ways, notching very steadily out there. So once again, it's Botham to Richards. And again, a very useful in-swing, a quite late swing there from uh, Ian Botham. This is quite impressive stuff, this. You can see how that ball swings late. But uh, beating the next time. Both of them again to goals. Oh, that's a nice set. That's four runs put away quite perfectly again by Laurie Gomes. Just delayed his shot a fraction, put it square of cover. A hundred partnership and uh the young Larry Gomes playing steadily along there, not looking in any trouble at all. Perfect four or two, Viv Richards. 167 balls, that 100 partnership has taken. Played at that one, well bowled. Just that uh, little bit of movement again. Beautiful delivery, this. The away swinger to Gomes, cutting right across him, and he was very close to that. Lovely stop. Have to hurry. Really, it's a magnificent feel of this uh, rumble. sweep outside lake stump and uh, it was beautifully controlled again brings uh, larry gomes four more and brings up the 150. just seven more runs added to take the west indies total at lunch up to 159 for two gomes on 48 and richard 66 a fine effort that from those two gomes timed the ball beautifully placed it well and Richards, although indisposed, played some magnificent shots. One or two of his defensive shots that went for four were quite frightening. Wouldn't have liked to have been out there bowling at him 
when he was doing that. The English bowlers worked very, very hard. They found the outside edge occasionally. They had appeals for LBW, and uh, just every so often, they managed to get past the outside edge. Good performance from them, but they still couldn't break through. After lunch, we pick up play in the second over. Two runs have been added. Ian Botham is the bowler, and taking strike is Larry Gomes. Cook is the fielder, and Richards may not be feeling all that well, but he's able to get back the three there. That gives Larry Gomes his half century. Now, it's a really good innings from Gomes. He started off this morning at four. He's now gone on to 52. He's hardly played a full shot, and uh, he's just been the perfect foil for Viv Richards. No one has seen that. Not necessarily because it went so fast, but uh, they lost it in the crowd. The man at Deep Square didn't pick it up, nor did the man at Long On. I think the bowler knew where it went. Played two shots earlier today, defensive strokes are length of four, right off the middle of the bat. That is a magnificent hit without any apparent real effort. Yes, and Viv is obviously looking now to hit the ball on the length side. I think, I think Nick Cook might be even worthwhile trying bowling over the wicket to both of them if he's going to persist with this kind of field setting. This time Botham's called into play at deep square. Beautiful feeling. Good shot. That one wasn't all that short. The game's made it, positioned it and timed it perfectly away past cover's right hand. That was a beautiful stroke. Yes, this is a very fine stroke. But again, Cook, you can see, is looking to try and hit that rough there. And he's got no margin of error from around the wicket. Well, if he comes from over the wicket, it gives him a lot more space to play with. So you never see that, but very rarely you see Derek Randall miss anything. And it was certainly gettable. 202 the total now for two wickets. This pair have been together since the start of play and into yesterday as well. No one will say that. Well, this is a fine shot, but again, it's halfway down the wicket, and uh, on this wicket, you should not be getting pulled. There it is. A hundred for Vivian Richards, and a beautiful stroke with which to bring it up. That's a good innings. He's not been well. He's indisposed yesterday. Came out this morning and has played really well. And again, it's a good shot, is this? Just a little bit too much width and slightly short, but it was a very good shot indeed, that. It's nice to swivel that round very fine indeed. That's gone for 4-2. And the scoreboard rolling round to 235, a 200 partnership. A 
and he's gone this time lovely catch there by Randall and uh, Richards falls end of another really remarkable performance 117 is made out of a total of 241 for three so that might just have straightened on him a little and Cook picking up his wicket in his uh, 16th over yes he gave this a little bit more air and got him to hit through the off side in fact it did just hold up a little bit and that's the length you've got to be bowing on this wicket you've got to pitch it up and make him come forward off the front foot but a very fine innings indeed from Viv Richards. So Dujan away nicely. He run that down quite skillfully through that uh, gully area. And pick up three runs for it. Hasn't really made a major impact with the bat so far on this trip, uh, Jeff Dujon. And Cook has got the silly point. That's the captain in there. Man almost immediately behind him. And that's picked his spot quite beautifully. Cluster of feelers on the offside, but uh, right smack through the middle of them. Well, if any young men want to see how to play an off-drive, there it is. Absolutely superb. That's one of the things we were talking about a little earlier, the beautiful placement of the ball by all these fellows today, the three of them, Richards, Gomes and Dujon. And that really is beautifully timed. And uh, that's been just about the only boring thing we've had to put up with at the ground. We might be approaching the time when the authorities have to do something about that. I'm all in favour of barrackers because they use their voices and they pay their money to come in. But I can't believe people banging drums like that and not disturbing the enjoyment of uh, other people who pay their money to come in through the gate. Gomes is looking for two. Can't get it. Quickly coming around there. Well, is he in both them? He knew what Larry Gomes would have been after. Gomes goes to 99. Dujon's 21. 288 for three. He's got it away. A little bit wide of the off stump. And Larry Gomes makes his first century against England. <laughs> 271 minutes, 202 balls for Larry Gomes. And in fact, it has been a magnificent performance from Larry Gomes to make that century first one he's made against England in his test match career a fine effort and as we mentioned a little earlier the highlights were the placement and the timing of the ball today really top-class performance and so too from Vivian Richards Geoffrey Dujon not out there playing some handsome strokes and uh, England's bowlers by now starting to tire a little I was disappointed um, with one or two of the aspects of the bowling I thought Miller should have bowled more he'd bowled only four overs up to the T interval he's one of the two main spinners in the side Nick Cook being the other and I was disappointed in uh, Cook's refusal to bowl over the wicket to the left-hander early on when eventually he did come over the wicket to Larry Gomes. He posed many problems for him. So the West Indies well in command at tea time. We pick up play now with the second ball. After the interval, one run has been added and Jeff Miller is on now and he's bowling to Jeff Duchon. And he's gone this time. Dujon quite aware of the fact he's on his way, a very smart catch there at Silly Point, and it's 294 for four with Miller striking with just the second ball here after T. And it could have been pad back in actual fact, but a good catch by David Gower coming in there.
Jeff Miller to Clive Lloyd. Down the wicket, the big hit. And made up his mind as soon as he saw that ball given the slightest bit of air. Fine shot by Clive Lloyd, brings him four runs and sees the uh, 300 up. a turn there but it was so short that Lloyd could wait for it and crush it where he liked he liked the offside this time so he's taken two fours off this over Pringle with the new ball to ball to Lloyd too worried about uh, losing a wicket out there Clive Lloyd he senses that this is the moment to press on he's been all attack since he went out there to replace Jeffrey Dujo safe in the air but away from Randall for model Lloyd goes to 44 And Clive Lloyd showing a sense of urgency. Well, there are still three days and almost an hour to go. That wide half volley didn't quite get his foot there and it went head high through the covers. Great power, straight down the ground. And a slower ball from Bob Willis. And Clive Lloyd picks it up. Beautiful straight swing of the bat. Watch out, Larry Gomes. <laughs> Derek Pringle to Clive Lloyd. Lloyd looks to be in great condition. He's bouncing around like a 20-year-old out there. And he's going to look for two here. And we'll get it. Half century to Clive Lloyd. And a magnificent innings by Clive Lloyd. What a fine player. Marvellous square cut there. And as Richie said, he's going like a 20-year-old. Marvellous innings. Nice placement again. Willis is the fielder. And Larry Gomes now goes on to 127, his highest test match score. Beating that 126 against Australia in 81-82. And that's placed again quite beautifully through the offside. Foot to the pitch, just lent into it. Not a great deal of power. It will bring him three runs. So these two have put 100 on now. And it hasn't taken all that long. Both of them to Lloyd. It's in the air, but perfectly safe. Another record for the statisticians there. Those uh, four runs take Clive Lloyd past the number made by Len Hutton in test matches. And it's been that sort of day again here at uh, Edgbaston. 
in uh, much more humid, not quite as much sun as yesterday. And that's it, surely. So Larry Gomes goes, beautifully caught there at slip, and a wicket for Pringle, who's been plugging away solidly at this end now ever since tea. So the breakthrough finally for England with 10 minutes to go. Full play closes here, 418 for five, and Gomes goes for 143. He's the ideal man going into number three with all the stroke makers round him, but he did a super job for them. And that's out too, yes, caught behind. Both of them, two takes his first wicket. Pringle takes the catch this time and Clive Lloyd goes. So often the case, through a good partnership, one following the other and Clive Lloyd goes for 71 to make West Indies 418 for six. And the finger goes up and uh, a mini collapse here. Marshall goes LBW to Pringle for two and it's 421 for seven. The stumps come out, no time for another batsman to come out there. Just a minute to six on the clock. And England who've been under the sword for most of the day strike back in the last 10 or 15 minutes. Indeed they did strike back and it was a great performance in the end. Those fellows must have been dog tired at the end of the day and still they fought hard and picked up those vital wickets towards the end of the six hours play. The card at the end, the West Indies, 421 for seven. The century makers, Larry Gomes, 143. Tremendous effort that from him. Vivian Richards, 117. And Clive Lloyd came out there and played just the perfect innings from a captain, 71 at the right time. He ran between the wickets like a 20 year old and he struck the ball with tremendous power. The three wickets that went down there, a credit to those men listed there, the England bowlers, and to David Gower, the skipper. Willis had two yesterday, then today Botham one, Pringle two, Cook one, Miller one, but that still leaves West Indies in a very, very handy position at this moment. They're 230 runs ahead with that score of 421 for seven. We've had to play now in the 40s in a very, very handy position at this moment. They're 230 runs ahead with that score of 400 and 21 for seven. We've had two tremendous days cricket here. There have been 612 runs scored in the two days, 17 wickets have fallen. We've had plenty of incident and this afternoon we had the fight back. But most of all, today we had Larry Gomes, his first century against England and his highest score in Test Match Cricket.